Hello, I love being the opening act, getting everybody's attention. And a hearty congratulations to everyone here for the many achievements of this day that we're celebrating. On behalf of the Geisinger Board of Directors, I'm Virginia McGregor, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the second Geisinger Commonwealth Day. It's historic. I know this is only the second time that we celebrated, but I have personally been celebrating medical education in our region since 2008. That's the year, as most of you know, when the idea of a medical school in northeastern Pennsylvania was born. That story and the tale of how our school became an integrated with Geisinger is a past worth honoring, and we're going to do that today. So what exactly do we honor? We honor vision and learning and innovation and excellence. So first, let's talk about vision. Today, we're honoring the vision of the School of Medicine's founders <laughs> and their daring plan to establish a medical school. Vision is a foundational element of Geisinger. It began in 1915 when a widow named Abigail Geisinger from Danville, Pennsylvania, wanted to make her hospital the best. She tapped a Mayo Clinic physician, Harold Foss, to lead it. Dr. Foss was insistent that education be a critical component of developing Geisinger from the very beginning. And so the new facility became a site for resident learning. And we honor that learning today. Our medical school is closing in on 1,000 doctors who have graduated. And we will be doing the same with our nursing school as we celebrate the success of our graduates in future years. And we've added our number of residents and fellows who do so much to advance learning and care at Geisinger with a uniquely Geisinger program of first in its kind preventive medicine residency in Pennsylvania, which leads me to innovation. Today, we honor the innovation of scientists who help, help us create preventative, preventative medicine residency program, who recognize that the best kind of research turns hypotheses into health. This innovation puts powerful tools into the hands of primary care providers to prevent de disease and to prefer, preserve wellness. And finally, we honor excellence. You've probably heard me say, that the Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine is the crown jewel of Northeast and Central Pennsylvania. It attracts and retains some of our country's brightest minds and most compassionate hearts. The Abigail Geisinger Scholars Program is now enrolling up to 45 students per class. In 2021, <clears throat> the first Abigail Geisinger Scholars graduated five in number, and nine graduated in 2022. And we are only going to see these numbers get larger. Soon, hospitals and clinics will be run by our own Geisinger Commonwealth graduates. We also see excellence in projects like MyCode, Geisinger's Precision Health Initiative. It's the largest healthcare system-based study of its kind. MyCode has enrolled 300,000 participants and now has DNA sequence and health data available on nearly 185,000 of those. But most of all, as a proud and committed Scrantonian, today I celebrate what all this excellence means to the people of Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania and to my hometown of Scranton. Under the umbrella of the Geisinger College Health Sciences, we are growing an incredible hub of medical and scientific learning and research that has a unique focus on value which means advancing wellness and preventive initiatives for our communities. So let's talk about embracing the future. And it's an exciting time that makes me so hopeful for Scranton and our entire region. We're going to take things that are uniquely Geisinger and apply them to education and research in a way that will make us the model for the future of healthcare. Our focus on what keeps people healthy means studying how patients make decisions and understanding the barriers <clears throat> to following those recommendations. It means empowering and enable primary care in a way our peers simply don't do. Here at Geisinger, primary care is elevated to its rightful position. 
as the most powerful weapon that we have to fight illness and disease. That makes our college and our health system a beacon of the nation. As the U.S. healthcare struggles with the cost of a fee-for-service model, here at Geisinger and right here in Scranton, we are demonstrating a new way to deliver both healthcare and education. It's an exciting future, and it's one that I wholeheartedly embrace. Our college is headed for great things, and that means our neighbors and our communities are too. And as a daughter of Scranton, I couldn't be more proud. So thank you for all that you do to develop the foundational elements of our vision, our learning, our innovation, and our excellence. And I hope you have a wonderful Geisinger Commonwealth Day. I know it's going to be very special, and I'm already looking forward to next year. And so now I introduce my good friend, our dean, Dr. Julie Byerly. Well, thank you so much, Virginia, for your continued support and your enthusiasm for our college. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today on Geisinger Commonwealth Day. On behalf of our academic leadership team, I welcome you. I'm joined by our vice deans, Dr. Bill Jeffries, who's vice dean of the medical school and provost of the college. You can stand when I call your name vice deans. <laughs> um, Dr. Krista Martin. Uh, Krista is our Vice Dean for Research. Thank you, Krista. Um, Dr. Michelle Thompson, our Vice Dean for Graduate Medical Education. Thank you, Michelle. Dr. Valencia Walker is unable to be with us today because she's at the American Academy of Pediatrics meeting presenting, but she's the Vice Dean for Health Equity and Inclusion. And Dr. Nicole Wall, our Vice Dean for Faculty and Continuing Professional Development. We're also so pleased to have many of our amazing faculty and staff here today, and we welcome our students. Thank you, students, for being here to learn more about the history and future of this, your school. We have many, many donors and supporters and political leaders and colleagues in higher education here with us today. I will not call you all out by name, but I do hope that after we conclude our ceremony, you will gather in the lobby together and share your own stories of impact for our school. There are many who are leading initiatives here in our school currently. They're budding first year students I see in the crowd and they're founders of our school and everyone in between. So I do hope that you'll take time to connect after we conclude. As we honor our past and embrace our future, we recognize, honor, and thank all those who helped to build this college on its pathway to success. As we build our academic traditions here at a relatively new school, we're taking the opportunity this year to name and celebrate our founding faculty and our first cohort of emeritus faculty. Special thanks to Dr. Janet Townsend, recently retired from the role of Vice Dean for Faculty Affairs. You can stand, Janet. <laughs> for leading the work to identify and list these groups of faculty. So I plan now to call out the names of our founding faculty, and there are many. I never like to ask people to hold applause because I think we should all cheer as much as we can possibly cheer. But I'll just tell you, it's a long list, and as your name is called as a founding faculty member, I invite you to stand. After we call all the founding faculty, I will be calling the founding and emeritus named faculty to join them in standing, and then we'll have a rousing round of applause for all these individuals who greatly shaped our school. So first for the founding faculty, I'll call Tanya Adonisio, John Arnott, Jen Boardman, Michael Bordenero, Patrick Boyd, Young Jen Cho, Mario Cornacione, Jess Kunick, Bob Delasandri, Denny Doggart, Richard English, Millicent Fleetwood, Jennifer Joyce, Darina Lazarova, the late Gerald Whit Litwack, Sonia Lobo, Bill McLaughlin, Maureen McLeod, 
Betsy Mead, Lois Nora, Mary Karen Powers, Michelle Schmoody, Greg Shanauer, Keith Schenberger, Shubra Shetty, Margaret Shoemaker, Mary Elizabeth Sokash, Ying Sung, John Zarek, Mushvik Tarafter, Lisa Thomas, Mary Triano, Mark White, Brian Wilcox, Kathy Wilcox. Those are our founding faculty. Thank you. And now for our founding and emeritus faculty. Um, David Averell, Charlie Bannon, Diana Callender, Ida Castro, Kathleen Doan, Mike Ferraro, Bill Yopst, Tom Martin, Steve Scheinman, Janet Townsend, Jerry Tracy, Bob Wright, Bill, Will Zering, and the late Stanley Dudrick. Congratulations and thank you to all those distinguished as founding faculty. Those are faculty with significant contributions to the curriculum before full accreditation was reached. And our emeritus faculty among that same group now retired from their work as educators. The ripple effects of your great work will be felt forever. To have the kind of school we want and need to serve our region as we desire, we must also have the support of community. Individual donors, as well as financial support from businesses, foundations, and other organizations in the community help us provide scholarships, enhance our programming, and create the excellence to which we aspire. Sanofi, is one of those donors. They recognize that prevention and wellness are key, just like Geisinger recognizes it. And I'm so pleased today to welcome Philip St. James, the community relations lead at Sanofi, and an important partner to us at Geisinger Commonwealth. Philip. Hello, everyone. Um, first duty I had when I came today was to cut my speech. I thought you'd like me enough to hear me for 15 minutes, but they said, no, three is enough. <laughs> so so, so uh, here it goes. Um, good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of Sanity colleagues in Pennsylvania and around the world, I'd like to thank you to, for the invitation to speak at the second uh, Commonwealth Day of Celebration today. And uh, I'm just grateful that you, had, you, you included us in this. You know, I, I, was, I was born in Harlem, New York. I was raised in St. Louis, Missouri. I went to school in Kansas City, Missouri, started a family, graduated, got promoted with the job I had, and they moved me to New Jersey. I thought the property taxes were too high, so I built a house in Pennsylvania. When I got to Pennsylvania, um, I, I, the first time I heard the word Commonwealth. And so I wanted to make sure that I understood what that meant, especially coming here today and gonna be speaking to you. And basically, Commonwealth is a word that means for the common good. And I think those four words perfectly describe the work that the institution here does uh, and what Sanofi does, who, who I represent. And so I wanted to talk about you know, the, the REACH High program. Uh, first of all, I wanted to let you know that Sanofi has been committed or has been committed to the Geisinger School for a long time. Um, since the school was uh, the Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine. And, um, during those years since, Santa Fe's backing of the school has benefited physicians and science research and student scholarships, the gala of which we were honored at at one time, and now the new Reach High program that we're doing in Monroe County. And it's a program that uh, I have to say, when it was first brought to me, I said no, because I had my strategy already, already planned. And you have a very tenacious direct, uh, development director here who was able to <laughs> persuade me to uh, consider the program. Just, he said, just look at it. I said, okay, so here, we are, here I am now talking about how great this program is because I said no at first. <laughs> uh, 
REACH High is an acronym that stands for Regional Education Academy for Careers in Health Higher Education Initiative. And uh, the overall goal of the REACH High program is to establish regional collaboration between Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine, higher education institutions, public high schools, uh, and community organizations to establish community-based enrichment and, and clinical exposure programs to promote academic success, student interest in the health and medical professions, um, creating a pathway to future careers, hopefully at Santa Fe. Um, let me tell you, one of the, 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 the few things that made me really change my mind about this and me, had me change my whole strategy about this program, uh, my whole strategy in the beginning, was because this program does these three things. 100% of retired participants graduate from high school. That alone. And these are kids that are said to be in economically and educationally disadvantaged school districts. That's our sweet spot. 98% um, of the participants describe the program as having significant impact on their academic progress and college career plans. 96% of undergraduate participants have completed college or are on track for graduation. And of this, approximately one half of these students are planning to graduate school um, and go to medical school in, 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 re, in uh, health and medical related careers. That's perfect for us. I'm, we're a pharmaceutical company. Um, <laughs> All this, all this is for students who are said to belong to uh, school districts that are educationally and economically disadvantaged. As I mentioned, that's a sweet spot for us. We also started, Santa Fe's all start, also started a new campaign last year called A Million Conversations. Um, Santa Fe, at Santa Fe, we work passionately to transform the practice of medicine. Santa Fe has also a long history in working in the healthcare systems to make our, our treatments accessible and affordable to patients everywhere. Um, but basically, or not basically, but in reality, um, there's obstacles that make it difficult for some people to access healthcare professionals. The sad truth is that uh, persons from underrepresented groups may have had difficult experiences with the healthcare system and have lost trust in it. Santa Fe did a, a, uh, a study in 2022, and they found, among other things, that seven in 10 people from black and ethnic minority communities have had trust damaging experiences. Seven in 10 disabled people are not feeling listened to, are feeling judged, and worst of all, feeling unsafe at times. A Million Conversations is the response that Santa Fe has to this challenge. We're investing resources to help close the trust gap substantially by 2030, we will deploy our expertise, our networks, our resource support, uh, resources and support to 100,000 people to be bridges of trust so that we can have the conversations that we know are necessary to make lasting change. We will do three things. Enable us to, it's gonna enable us to grow a pipeline of diverse healthcare leaders by providing scholarships to minority students, facilitate dialogue between less dominant communities and medical professionals, and support national conversations about trust and health inequities by providing research and policy recommendations. It's a big goal, we recognize that, um, but you know, it's something that's necessary and something we need to do. I'll end with an interesting quote from Lucy Hammerberg, MD, Chief Quality Officer of Northwest Community Hospital in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Dr. Lucy says, physicians are going to look at you sideways if you ask them to just simply align. But if you ask them to be leaders and determine what the future will look like, they will rise to the challenge. To each and every one of you here today, thank you for all you do to rise to the challenge, to reimagine the future of healthcare, and to make tomorrow better than today, all for the common good. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> My name is Jay Arnett. I am a first year medical student here at GCSOM. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us today as we express our profound gratitude to the generous donors who have made a significant impact on our medical school. So when I was asked to speak here today, I didn't really know what to say. So 
as a trained scientist and researcher, I did the first thing I learned. I went to Google, I typed in Geisinger, Kamalote, <laughs> and I went to the website, and I saw in italics the quotes, honoring our past, embracing our future. In the past, in my past, I honestly did not know if I had what it took to become a physician. And it wasn't insecurities and my academic abilities, but factors and barriers like financial information, mentoring, and inspirational resources. I didn't know the process and requirements to even apply to medical school. As a senior of college at UC Scranton, I learned of a Pathways program opportunity right here at GCSOM for URM students interested in becoming doctors. The program examined what I needed to become a competitive applicant. I participated in research projects with faculty and medical students and was eventually published. I also received MCAT training, invaluable mentoring from medical students, application essay support, and exposure to many URM physicians throughout the Geisinger system. From the moment I decided to become a part of the Geisinger family four years ago as a young college student, I didn't see it then, but the road before me to where I'm standing now began to pave. The program gave me the encouragement and the guidance that I needed to see myself in this future role. I then became employed at Geisinger uh, to work in the same department that was giving me all these opportunities. And my role was to find and search for young, brilliant minds in similar positions as me who may, have, may not have known or know that the resources are out there to achieve their full potential. It is through amazing donations like those from Sanofi and various organizations and individuals that facilitate the work of molding physicians, future researchers, and scientists, and not just at the high school, just not, not just at the higher education level, but the high school and middle school and elementary level. Through Geisinger, I not only learned about what it took to go to medical school, but this institution actively built me up to become a medical student and kept me here. <laughs> <laughs> I thank God for most of my successes, but I must give thanks to those who fill up these walls, the faculty, the staff, and those throughout this great institution. And furthermore, I must thank those who helped build these walls. The generosity of philanthropists helped fund state-of-the-art facilities, cutting-edge technology, and world-class faculty. These resources have allowed our students to learn in an environment that mirrors the realities of modern, health, modern healthcare, ensuring we are well prepared to meet the challenges, challenges of the ever-evolving medical landscape. The generosity of our donors helps support scholarships and financial aid available to diver, deserving students. Many of these students come from diverse backgrounds and underprivileged communities, and without your assistance, they might not have had the opportunity to pursue their, dream, their dreams of becoming healthcare professionals. And this generosity extends beyond these walls. The mission of Geisinger is to resonate these experiences and these qualities throughout our communities, our nation, and our world. The doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals who graduate from our school carry with them the knowledge and values instilled here and help countless patients wherever they practice. In conclusion, I want to extend our deepest gratitude to each and every one of you for your unwavering support. Your philanthropy is not just an act of generosity, it's a legacy of hope and healing. It's a testament, and I'm a testament, to the profound impact that individuals like yourself can have on the world. We are truly great, grateful for your support, and we promise to honor your trust in us by continuing to strive for excellence in medical education, research, and patient care. Thank you for making our vision of a healthier, more compassionate world a reality. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Angela Debilio Kalinowski, and I'm a graduate of the class of 2017. I'm honored to have been asked to speak here today to share my medical school experience and my thoughts on returning to the area since completing training. It's also so nice to see so many familiar faces here today. Born and raised in Scranton, and as a graduate of the University of Scranton, when choosing where to attend medical school, staying local always seemed like the natural choice. This afforded me the great opportunity to stay close to my family and friends. Having a local support system was vital to my success, with both help with physical tasks, such as meals and laundry, but also the emotional support to help endure a challenging medical school curriculum. 
I was very fortunate for this opportunity, as only a few years prior, this didn't exist for students in this area. I was able to give back through my community service efforts in school to my local community and to learn to practice medicine in hospitals and clinics that felt familiar to me and where we had always sought care growing up. I felt very prepared for residency after completing my medical school degree. I completed my family medicine residency at Abington Jefferson Health, which has now trained multiple Geisinger graduates. Faculty at my program had commented on more than one occasion that they were always happy to see an application from Geisinger on their desks, as they felt that we were very well qualified and trained students that made competent, successful residents. After residency, I then returned to the area to practice medicine at the private practice family medicine office that I did my rotation at during medical school. It's been a wonderful experience being able to care for my local community members. I have patients who tell me stories of working with my grandparents or growing up next to my parents. It's humbling and rewarding to have previous teachers, coaches, and mentors from my childhood now trust me for their care. I have really enjoyed serving as a member of the alumni board for the past three years. This allows me the opportunity to stay current with all the exciting new changes and endeavors happening at this school. It has been an honor to get to know Dr. Byerly and see firsthand her passion for this school and advancing healthcare in this area. As a board, we worked on launching software called Geisinger Connect to better connect alumni with current students for mentorship and look forward to seeing that program expand. It has been interesting to learn about all the new curriculum changes and to see the school grow and adapt to the current needs of students and the healthcare needs of this community. I'm excited to continue my relationship with the school and to hopefully help current students in their journey. I would now ask Dr. William Jeffries, Vice Dean for Medical Education and Vice President for Academic Affairs to speak. Thank you. Almost beat the applause to the podium. Um, and it's uh, great to see so many fellow University of Scranton alums on the panel today. I'm just uh, delighted to see that. I don't know. We, I don't know if we were in the same class, though. Um, I was. I was a student there when Saint Ignatius was still alive. Um, but and so, thank you, Dr. Kalinowski. And um, this afternoon, you've heard about education and research at Geisinger from the community, uh, student, and alumni perspective. Um, but I, I want to emphasize that these viewpoints are essential and important to us as educators because at Geisinger College of Health Sciences, our first duty is to be responsive and accountable to all three of these constituents. Uh, in 2023, we significantly advanced the Geisinger mission of making better health easier. Uh, here are some points of pride. First is the total health curriculum. and. Uh, we talked about the faculty today, and the, the faculty got together during COVID and created this health uh, curriculum, uh, which is an innovative uh, and, and well-respected uh, con contribution to medical education uh, nationally. Uh, the new medical school curriculum has been ongoing continual assessment and improvement since its launch in 2021. Uh, the centerpiece of the curriculum is its six themes, uh, one of which is health system citizenship which means understanding and, functionally, uh, and functioning effectively in complex health systems. It has been heartening to watch our peer reference metrics for curriculum outcomes climb as we measure the success of our curriculum. Uh, we're seeing substantial improvement in student confidence in preparation for residency, medical board pass rate, and, and student satisfaction with the quality of their education. We're also seeing uh, a, a tremendous uh, assessment a success uh, with respect to program uh, directors uh, looking at the success of our graduates. Uh, now going forward, uh, we will fully integrate the health system science uh, curriculum into all of our Geisinger branded programs with directed experiential learning elements and will expand the uniquely Geisinger elements uh, of a medical school curriculum across all our education programs, ensuring a baseline understanding of value-based care for all of our graduates and employees. 
We also want to inc be increasingly recognized as regional and national leaders in curriculum innovation uh, and faculty development and student wellness. Another significant development has been the transformation of the Lewistown Hospital Nursing Diploma Program into the Geisinger School of Nursing, which now offers an associate's degree in nursing. The result of this new program is that our nursing school now enrolls significantly more students and has these future nurses on a more flexible career path, hopefully directed at employment in Geisinger. We're also making great success on uh, and, and more progress in, in our School of Nursing building in the heart of Lewistown. When it's finished, we plan for it to become an important hub of community life with educational and community health events uh, that are hosted not just by the nursing students, but also medical students and residents in this burgeoning educational hub. We are also proud of the establishment of the federally funded Nursing Clinical Faculty and Preceptor Academy uh, that will expand the number of nurse educators at Geisinger and beyond. With this program, we are poised as leaders in our region, as faculty from educational institutions throughout the Mid-Atlantic region will become credentialed with certificates from our nursing school. Uh, so these plans lead me to the expansion of our West Campus as a whole. Last year, the first cohort of medical students began their rotations in the West. This move, coupled with important work in nursing education that I already talked about, and the growing primary care uh, focused residency in Lewistown, is making the West Campus a hub for academic activity. Look for the West Campus to be a nationally recognized center of excellence in rural primary care delivery, scholarship, and education, as is part of our strategic plan. The Abigail Geisinger Scholars Program that Virginia mentioned earlier is hitting its stride with 44 new scholars joining us this fall. Each year, we'll graduate more new doctors who have pledged to stay at Geisinger and care for our neighbors. Across the system, there are budding research opportunities for medical and, and our MBS students. This synergy with our research institute is bearing fruit and resulting in opportunities for publishing and presenting for our students that help them become more competitive and more well-rounded physicians. In addition, we are building new programs. Next year, we're going to begin our genetic counseling master's program and we are investigating other degree programs that will enhance our graduate offerings. These programs will be directed at enhancing our scholarship, serving our community, and leveraging the unique opportunities offered by our integration with Geisinger Health System. Great things have been happening, and we anticipate the coming year to produce still more good news. And having just mentioned research, I'm now pleased to introduce our Chief Scientific Officer, Dr. Christian Martin. Good afternoon, everybody. It's just great to be here to get to tell you about some of the work that we've done over the past year in both the Research Institute, but really all across the Geisinger system. And it's so exciting for me to hear from one of our first year medical students how you've already embraced that in just your early career. So exactly what we want to see more of. So this year represents the first year that research has been formally brought together with education under the umbrella of the Geisinger College of Health Sciences. And I think everybody who was here last year remembered the umbrellas that were handed out as part of that ceremony. This new organizational structure has already begun to facilitate stronger collaborations between our research, education, and clinical entities in areas such as population health, genomics, cancer, cardiology, mental health, bioethics, and health system sciences. And we're really excited to see how all of those continue to grow over the next years. We truly embrace Geisinger as a learning health system where the data we generate as part of everyday routine clinical care can be used and leveraged to discover how we can take better care of our patients. And we cover very diverse areas of research using this data all the way from vaccines to genes. For example, did you know that Geisinger studies showed that sending text messages just prior to a patient's primary care clinic appointment, in addition to adding information to certain patients if we knew that they might be at higher risk for having complications from the flu, 
actually increased our flu vaccination rates at Geisinger. Or, as you heard from Virginia, that Geisinger's MyCode program has grown to be the largest in the world where we've paired healthcare data with genomic data that we can now use um, for our research questions. She mentioned that we now have over 300,000 patients enrolled. That's more than 20% of our patients who have actively participated for us to try to do better research to take better care of our communities. Um, as part of my code, um, both here at Geisinger and other collaborating institutions, we're studying the connections between genes and health. How do we prevent disease? How do we detect it earlier? Or how do we treat it better? All ways to improve care and outcomes for our patient population. And I want to mention that our MyCode care team is here today. So if you're interested in learning more about the project or would like to enroll, they're right out um, in the corridor so you can stop by and say hello. I'm also excited to share that this year we funded our first round of medical marijuana grants. As a reminder, Geisinger became a medical marijuana academic clinical research center in 2021. And this is a program that's organized by the state of uh, Pennsylvania. And the funded studies are truly beginning um, to look at various areas of research and how medical marijuana impacts our patients' health. Um, some of the work that is going to be explored in the new programs is establishing a knowledge base and infrastructure around the use of medical marijuana in our adult and pediatric patients, evaluating the evidence that exists behind medical marijuana use by comparing state regulations with data from the National Academy of Sciences, and exploring patient and provider attitudes and beliefs about medical marijuana and other similar medical interventions. Another true research highlight this year was reinvigorating the Henry Hood Award for Clinical and Research Excellence, which recognizes excellence in research that advances clinical care. This year's awardee was Dr. Chris Still, a professor of medicine in the school and founding director of our Center for Obesity and Metabolic Health. Dr. Still's research was really incredible to hear about at the evening when we awarded him the Hood Award, and it's included discoveries um, such as identifying a gene that protects against liver disease. This work has le led to the development of drugs that will soon be able to offer an early clinical trials to our patients. So truly how you can see work being translated to help improve the care of our, of our communities. And finally, with all of this exciting research going on at Geyser, Geisinger, we're able to offer more opportunities for our learners to engage in research and embrace it as part of their careers, as you heard earlier. We encourage our trainees to partner with our faculty conducting research through programs like our summer internship program and our four-year research honors program, which will celebrate our first graduates in 2024. And I really want to acknowledge Dr. Sonia Lobo, who has developed and leads these programs. And she'll have a booth um, today that can explain more information about them. So I encourage you to stop by, meet Sonia, and learn more about those as well. At Geisinger, we're truly learning from every patient to make better health easier for all. We are uniquely poised to be differentiators in taking care of people and populations and offering unique learning experiences. And I hope you will continue to follow our journey. And with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Julie Byerly, who's going to tell you more about the vision for our future. So thank you to everyone. And as you can see, it's been quite a year for our college. Those, believe it or not, on, those highlights only scratch the surface because each and every one of you here and many not able to be here could tell your own story of an accomplishment or an initiative that you led last year. So lots is happening here. But I wanna share with you a little bit more about our future. I want to share with you our vision laid out in our new strategic plan, Drive to Thrive. I think my colleagues on the academic leadership team, uh, which led the formation of the strategic plan, are teasing me when they came up with the name Drive to Thrive, because Dr. Townsend in particular was reminding me as a Southerner that thrive is a one-syllable word. <laughs> I've, I've been trying, because I really like to say thrive, um, <laughs> but okay, I'm trying, one syllable, drive to thrive. <laughs> 
<laughs> we can drive to Thrive. That's good. But Thrive stands for um, Transform Health Through Research, Inspiration, Value, and Education. And that's what we do here. Research, Inspiration, Value, and Education. Drive to Thrive's vision is to make better health easy through education, research, and scholarship that develop healthcare professionals inspired and prepared to improve the health of diverse people and populations, to use Geisinger's unique assets to transform the way care is delivered in an integrated healthcare organization that supports academic excellence, attracts the very best, and ensures our ability to thrive in a sustainable and inclusive culture. As a health system, we at Geisinger are renowned for our remarkable success in value-based care. We're able to improve the health of entire populations while at the same time delivering precision health care that comes with the guarantee known as proven care. This happens with expertise and investment in prevention, wellness, and primary care. Research, innovation, and clinical care are deeply integrated. Clinical questions inform the research. Researchers seek solutions to clinical dilemmas. Clinicians deploy those solutions and assess the success. And data, data, data drives that improvement cycle for all of us. We are a learning health system. Drive to Thrive recognizes that Better Health Easy relies on that deep integration within the Geisinger system with the data acting as the connective tissue. So first and foremost, our new college will work hard to achieve that same level of integration and engagement with the system and with each other. Leaning into our strengths, we will provide a uniquely Geisinger education, which will include systems thinking, quality improvement, dedication to prevention and wellness. Our learners will know the reality of today's clinical delivery and health insurance systems, and not only think how they should prepare themselves to succeed and serve in that system well, but also how they must, as leaders, nudge that system to be even easier for people. We are definitely not lost in the ivory tower here at Geisinger Commonwealth. At Geisinger College of Health Sciences, we are engaged and accountable to the real people that we serve, members of our communities, people we know and care about. We don't have time or resources to duplicate efforts unnecessarily. We're surrounded by so many other wonderful institutions of higher learning and so many community agencies focused on service. We're out among them with our sleeves rolled up, ready to see how we can serve and work together for the benefit of us all. In research, we are turning hypotheses into health by disseminating and implementing our research results. We're focusing that research leaning into those strengths, making the difference we know we can, and sharing our discoveries with the world. Good health shouldn't be a trade secret. We want to model how it should be done, particularly in rural and disadvantaged communities with few resources. This inspiring vision, unapologetically in service to others, is how we will inspire the best and brightest to come join us. We want to make Geisinger College a thriving place to work and learn. We will continue to do just that by making, feel wel making people feel welcome and included. We will build resilience in ourselves and in our community as we educate and inform our workforce that makes better health easier. So as we conclude today's celebration, we invite you to enjoy the afternoon in your great college. 
This is your school. It's our school for the community. I hope that each of you will reflect on all that got us to this place at this moment. Reflect on what we've all done together and especially reflect on what you personally have brought to this important work. And I hope you will take a moment to see that future together, to drive, to thrive together. I invite you to take tours of this beautiful building. There's a tour table out there clearly marked. I invite you to learn more about the research and other opportunities at the tables throughout the display. I invite you to buy a Geisinger Commonwealth sweatshirt, if you like, <laughs> to show the swag for your great school. And I invite you to fuel your drive to thrive with some of our cute little cookies and car coasters that we have available for you. And if you'd like to read more details about our strategic plan, of course, we have a takeaway for that as well. But now we will conclude our ceremony with, our, uh, with another of our emerging academic traditions. You know, as a new school, we get to build a lot of things. We're far from a football team, but we're building our traditions academically. And last year, a small group of students, staff, and faculty wrote our alma mater. I love our alma mater. I hope you will too. So I invite all of you to join in singing this together. And the words are found in your program. And it's pretty catchy. You'll be able to catch on even if you didn't get a program. But rest assured that we will be led in the singing of our alma mater. That's an inside joke if you were at our graduation. We <laughs> Well, we will be led in the singing of our alma mater by some of our students, and thank you to Madison Brooks, Nydia Deshmuk, Camille Falkowski, Ryan Kimsky, Jonathan Kerr, and Tanner Thompson. And I invite you all to stand and sing together. <laughs> 